Hello everyone and welcome to Railroader. My name is Danny B of Danny B Trains. This is a game that I have been looking forward to for a little while now. Now usually I just play Trains 22 and I love getting in and doing surveyor mode and working on my own routes in that game. But this is something that, you know, I'm not really going to say I'm good at understanding, you know, steam routes of back in the day. So this is a game that's been designed for those who just want to run steam engines. And I'm looking forward to getting here and having some fun with this. Railroader and another game, Century of Steam, are two that I've had my eye on for a little while now. Just seeing some trailers and, you know, a little bit of previews here and there. But I've tried not to watch any kind of other person's, like, video on this. Trying not to get any idea of it. Because I just want to go in blind, unbiased, and have a good time with this. Uh, I'm a, you know, big train fan, like video games, so let's give it a shot. Now this is Railroader, still in early access, so there is a note here from the creators. Welcome to Railroader Early Access. We're thrilled to finally share what we've been working on, but keep in mind that Railroader is still a work in progress. We still have a lot of work to do on buildings and scenery as well as balancing out the progression of company mode. If you're new to Railroader, get started with a tutorial by starting a single player company mode game. If you're looking to learn more, check out our Discord, our YouTube channel, or the Steam community. Links to those are in the help menu. Thank you for playing Railroader. Alright, and so this game is on Steam. It's on sale right now for $29.99. It's a very reasonable price for a game to just launch, in my opinion. Uh, it's being made by the company Giraffe Lab. You see their name down at the bottom right of the menu screen right here. So, getting into it, let's just check out what we've got here. We've got our quit. Yeah, let's quit the game. Credits, help, settings, multiplayer mode, which is interesting. We'll get into that at another time. Uh, there is a few other trains YouTubers that I think will be getting this. And uh, maybe we can get in and play a little bit with them. Uh, we're going to be starting off in single player mode. First of all, let's check out the settings. Uh, you can you can change your character. I'm Danny B. Talks. Uh, that's my main YouTube channel. Uh, graphics. You can set your graphics settings. You can set up your sound settings how you like it. Input, features, etc. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into single player mode right now. Uh, we accidentally uh, played this game on OBS without audio. So I am re-recording this at midnight so let's get right into it we've already know a little bit about this unfortunately we're gonna go ahead and delete that one and get started with a new game and uh we do not want to be the dillsboro and east smoky mountain railroad i am sorry we are going to be the danny b railroad corporation and my reporting mark will be the dbrc mode company or sandbox we're going to stay in company mode uh, there's only one map right now. It's a huge map. I've got a preview of this already from the previous reporting. Uh, file your save name. This is December 8, 2023. We're going to go ahead and hit start. All right, welcome to the tutorial. This is East Whittier after the flood. Today's the day. We're our own railroad. The Atlantic Railway might not have thought this area was worth their time, but now it's all in our hands. We got one and a half good engines out of the deal, and the roundhouse in Bryson is in good shape. Trouble is, it doesn't do as much good with the bridge at Ella still out. This yard at East Whittier will be our home for now. It's got a yard that doubles as the interchange with the Atlantic Railway to the east, and the engine service facilities, the coal conveyor, water column, and engine shed are more than enough for our current needs. Reposition this window by dragging it by its title bar at the top. If you close it with the X button in the top right corner, you can reopen it by clicking Tutorial button in the upper right corner of the screen. Don't see any buttons? Hover your mouse there and buttons to access windows will appear as well as the in game time. So let's go actually go ahead and move this to a position I like it better right up here in the top left and we'll hit next. Job briefing. Before we get to running any passengers or freight, we have a few things to attend to around a shop. Here's a plan for today. Get familiar with the engine and take on coal and water. Rescue the derailed locomotive, order more coal and take the hopper to the interchange. Run a passenger train to Whittier and Ella west of here. Set up your first freight contracts with customers. Let's start by getting familiar with how to look and move around in the world. Railroader has two cameras. One selects the first person camera. Two selects the overhead camera. The selected camera moves with WASD. So W for forward, S for back, D for right, A for left. Right mouse button to rotate and look around. There we go. And mouse wheel to change your zoom distance. And this is actually incredible detail for a zoom in my opinion. Look how detailed that engine looks. Spacebar jumps. Cool. Middle mouse resets zoom. Try switching between cameras and adjust your point of view to find what works for you. Hold down shift to run, like that. 
This works in both cameras and control to move the overhead camera even faster. Remember, the cameras are completely independent. You can use this to your advantage. And I'm going to show you the control right now. Whoa, that's a little too fast for my like. It's already fast enough. Let's board the engine, which is just outside the engine shed. So that would be that one over there. Not that one, because it is actually derailed. That's the one we're going to rescue later. So we're going to go hop into engine number three. Find a ladder between the engine and the tender. Move forward with W while facing the ladder to climb into the cab. At the top of the ladder, find the engineer seat and get in. Come on. Come on, get in. Get in. Get in. There we go, boy. All right, there we go. And we have a seat. There we go. Top of the ladder, find the engineer seat in the cab. It's on the right side of the engine, so we walk in, have a seat, and click on the engineer's window to open it. So, yes, we're going to open that up. Uh, click E to lean out the window. And for a better view, you can also click Q to look left. Next, let's look at the controls for the engine. Engines of Railroader have four major controls. Throttle, Reverser, Independent Brake, Train Brake. Use your mouse and the tooltips to find these four controls in the cab. They each have a handle and are generally to your left or in front of you, easily reachable from your seat. First, we'll cover the brakes. Before you get the train moving, it's critical that you know how to stop it. The Independent Brake and Train Brakes behave very differently and are used in very different situations. The independent brake controls the brakes on the engine and tender only. It's fast to apply and release, but it's only good for stopping the engine alone or very short trains. The train brake is used for slowing or stopping a train. It's controlled by changing the air pressure of the brake line. And because of this, it's slow to apply and even slower to release. In fact, you can only fully release it. It's not possible to partially release a train brake, unlike the independent. Each brake has its own control handle. Both brakes are applied by rotating the control toward the front of the engine and released by them moving back towards the back of the engine all the way back for the train brake. Try applying and releasing each of the train brakes in the cab. Leave the independent brake applied toward the front of the engine. Okay, so let's actually do that. That's the train brake. Forward and back. That's the independent brake. The throttle is set between 0 to 100% and controls how much steam is sent to the pistons, which makes the engine go faster. The reverser is set between minus 100% full reverse and 100% full forward. When you want the full power at low speed, push the reverser all the way forward or back. As the speed rises, however, you'll need to move the reverser closer to the center. You can think of the reverser as similar to setting gears on a bicycle. Moving it towards the center enables the engine to work more efficiently allowing the engine to go faster. Note that the center itself is neutral. No power is applied to the drivers. Let's look at the engine from outside. Switch to the overhead camera of two, and then shift two to center the camera on your character. Next, control click on your engine. This opens the equipment inspector window, or inspector for short. This inspector can be used to view information about the engine and make changes. Click the select button in the bottom left corner of the inspector. When an engine is selected, its HUD controls are shown in the bottom left corner of the screen. Close the inspector. I'm also going to go ahead and click follow. So then I can have this set on my engine right away. The HUD controls are simply another way to control the engine. They operate the same as the 3D controls in the cab. They are train brake, top left, independent brake, bottom left, reverser, bottom right, throttle, top right. The train speed in miles per hour is also shown next to the reverser. Notice the numbers of the slider knobs. The throttle number shows the throttle percentage. The reverser shows whether it's in forward or reverse. The train brake and independent brake show the pressure in the brake line and the pressure in the brake cylinder, respectively. The meaning of these numbers is a bit involved for this tutorial, however. The HUD controls also show a graphical representation of the brakes in the cars coupled to your selected engine. Look for two rectangular dots just above the sliders. Each dot represents an engine, tender, or car. These dots will change color to tell you what the brakes in your train are doing. White and beige means it's fully released, and that's currently what we're seeing right now. Red means fully applied. Purple means the handbrake is applied, and gray means derailed. A small warning icon will appear between cars when the air is not connected. More on connecting air later. When an engine is selected, the following keys can also be used. B is bell. <laughs> H or shift H is whistle low or high. Here's H. 
Here's Shift H. V plus mouse up and down will quill the whistle. J will cycle our headlight settings. There it is on dim, there it is on high, there it is the rear on, there it is on the rear dim, and there they are off. Selecting 0 will track the selected car. Selecting 9 will track the end of the train. Control 0 will do a first person jump to the selected car. Hit 0 now to track your engine. Next, we'll cover how to top off your water and coal. You can check your fuel and water by hovering the mouse over the tender. Right now, we have 3 tons of coal and 2,000 gallons of water. Using the overhead camera, follow the track ahead of your engine to find the water column and coal conveyor, which are about 50 yards away. You will go through two switches on your way there, left at the first switch and then through the second one. Both switches are set to normal, meaning they are set for a typical path to train. Click the switch stands and note how the points of the switch, the blades, which guide the wheels, move. The target, the circle above the switch stand, changes from green to red. Red means reversed or diverging from normal path. Set both switches so that your train can follow them forward and reach the water column and coal conveyor. The first one will be normal and the second reversed. It's a good idea to check your switches as you go. Getting one wrong could be a costly mistake. Let's move our engine out of the shed, planning to stop with the water column first. Move the reverser all the way forward and release your independent brake by moving the control toward the back of the engine and the HUD right is forward and left is back. Now start ringing the bell and give two whistle blasts the signal we are moving forward. Let's go ahead and start with the bell and two blasts with the horn. And we're going to go ahead and get set. We're going to go ahead and hit the reverse of the forward. Go ahead and the independent brake is off. And we're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of throttle now. About 15%. We'll be open up the throttle to between 10 and 20 percent. You should start rolling. Stop the bell. And once you get to about 5 miles an hour, close the throttle. See As the engine is getting close to the water column, apply the independent brake by moving it forward to the front of the engine. Bring the engine to a stop before it passes the water column. So we've got a little bit of time. We are getting close. Okay, go ahead and be applying the brakes. Okay, we did a little too soon. A little bit of throttle. We're up to about 7%. I'll go ahead and let that be off. Let's go ahead and get off of the, that a little bit. And hold tight. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. And get that hatch lined up just about right. Water hatch. Using either camera, find the water hatch in the rear of your tender. It's pill shaped and facing upward. Click on it to open it. You'll see water inside. And yep, you have water down there. This is where we can fill the tender's water storage. Let's go ahead and release that into the brick. This is where we can fill the tender's water storage. We need to align the water column up at this point on our tender. It doesn't need to be perfectly lined up, but it needs to be close. Release the independent brake and open the throttle a little if necessary to continue forward. So go ahead and rotate that. And we should be perfect because it's lowering and we are getting water in there. Water is the lifeblood of a steam engine. Without it, your engine will not operate. Water is unlimited on our railroad and can be sourced from water columns such as the one beside us. A good number of water towers and columns can be found across the line. Click the water column spout to rotate it into position. It will start flowing, provided your engine's water hatch is close enough. If water doesn't start flowing, try moving your engine to better align the spout. The water will automatically stop once your tender is full. Once you've got enough water, stow the spout and close the hatch. Coal is next. So right now we've got our three tons of coal, and we are filling up with water. Right now we are about 3,600 gallons of water. 
I think we can get it up to about 4,000 gallons. I may be incorrect, but we'll find out. We're getting close to it, I know that. And yep, we are done at 4,000, so we're going to go ahead and close that hatch now. And next we need to go up to the coal conveyor. The coal conveyor at East Whittier unloads coal from a hopper and into your tender. The hopper is empty, but the conveyor has a little bit of coal stored. Move your engine ahead and stop the coal bin of your tender under the chute. Click the chute and it will lower. As with the water, coal will only start flowing once it's aligned. You will see the coal pile in the tender rise as it fills. You should always check your coal towers and diesel fuel points to see if you need to order more fuel for them. Hover the mouse over the storage portion on the conveyor that's in the ground to check how much fuel is stored. We'll cover ordering fuel later. There's not enough coal to fill the tender, but we should have plenty for our work. Click on the chute to stow it. Let's see about rescuing the other engine derailed during the flood. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of throttle. We're going to go ahead and get the throttle off. And just let that thing roll. Just a little further. A little bit more. And right there. Go ahead and click that. And let it be filling up. And there we have it. Coal is going into the tender. The map. Let's get our bearings. We're stopped on the yard and engine service lead. A track which runs parallel to the main line. The main line runs east to west. Our head end is pointed towards the western end of the railroad. Open the map with M. The map shows track, engines, location names, and your camera view. Each time you open the map, it centers on your camera. Within the map, you can click and drag the pan, like that. Scroll wheel zooms in and out. Control T to move your camera to the point your mouse is over, enabling you to quickly move across the map. You can also use Control T to move your character to where your mouse is pointed within the world. Navigating to the wreck. Find the derailed engine. There it is. You can see the cardinal directions at the top of the screen as you turn. If you're having trouble finding it, check the map with M. You will see two engine markers, one for the running engine, the other for the wreck. We'll need to use our engine to rescue the wreck. So use the overhead camera or map to plan your path there. There's a switch just ahead that leads to it. Once you've found it, pull ahead of the switch, stop, reverse the switch, and roll down to the wreck, but not close enough to couple to it, about 20 yards ahead of it. Keep your speed low, no more than 15 miles an hour. You don't want two derailed engines. That we do not, so let's go ahead and get her moving. Go ahead and click zero to follow. And yeah, we should be lined up correctly. It's going to go just past this switch right over here. And we'll reverse it and go back there and get it. Alright, we've come to a stop here. We're going to go ahead and throw that switch. Dynamic brake is off. Put her in reverse. And throttle her down. Click 9 to focus on the back. Go ahead and leave that switch there. We're gonna have to come out of there at some point. Go ahead and get that throttle off. And uh, we're rolling in too hot, we're rolling in too hot, we're rolling in too hot, we're rolling in too hot. We're fine actually. Once the engine and tender are re-railed, they can be coupled to and moved. If this engine still had coal and water, it might be able to limp home. Since it doesn't, we'll need to rescue it. Couple to the wreck of your engine by reversing into it, making sure to keep your speed below 5 miles an hour in order to avoid causing even more damage. We've got to hop back into first person here, and we're going to go ahead and move out of this engine. Go ahead and get our camera set. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Tight fit. Yep. Okay. And shift R. That's back on the tracks. Shift R for you, and that and that train engine is back on the rails. Release the dynamic brake. Throttle to about six percent. We are all set. Could have maybe done more throttle than that. Up it up to eleven. You're back down to two, zero, and there we go. Come to stop. 
the damage engine in tow, bring it back past the switch you use to access its track, the sawmill loop. You might need to use throttle to get the wreck up the hill. Set the switch to normal and shove back past the coal and water into the engine shed, stopping the damage engine inside the shed. Since we aren't connected to the air on the wrecked engine, the independent brake is the best choice for reducing speed. Inside the shed, change the first person camera and get on the ground between your tender and a damage engine. Click the coupler between the two, open it, and move your engine forward a few yards to leave the, am to leave the damage engine in the shed. Now that the wreck is on a repair track, we need to hire a shop worker to get it repaired. So before we can do all that, we gotta get this train moved over there. A little bit of throttle. And we are moving out. Okay, now we are getting a little fast now. So let's go ahead and get off that. And let's get set to stop right now. Alright, we went ahead and thrown that back. We're gonna go ahead and click our bell. Put us back at about 12 throttle. I'm gonna release the dynamic brake. Should start coming on back. We can get off the throttle as we work on bringing it in. Go hit that dynamic brake just a little bit. Just a little bit more. Get some more distance out of it. Get that bad boy right on in there. A little bit more. Right there. Back in the first person. I'm going to have to run around the engine because of the way I parked this thing. All right. So what do we do now? You can see we never had these connected. Oh, you can actually connect them and disconnect. Inside the shed, change the first person camera and get on the ground between your tender and the damage engine. Click the coupler. Okay. Between the two, open it and move your engine forward a few yards, leave the damage engine in the shed. Switch to the Locations tab and find East Whittier Engine Service in the list. This location page shows you where it is and what tracks it has. Clicking on any of the map pointer icons moves the camera there. Hovering over the text will highlight those tracks, number of shop crew, and their wages. Fuel on hand as well. Presently, we have no shop crew. Hire one or two by clicking the Hire button. Shop crew work on a daily basis so our new worker will start work on this engine at midnight. You can hire more if you want to get the repairs done faster. Keep in mind, the crew is still paid even if there isn't any work to do. Okay, so we need to go to uh, locations. We need to get the East Whittier engine service. Okay, so we have tomorrow one at $15 a day. Time to complete one day and 10 hours. Estimated time to repair equipment on repair tracks to 100% at planned shop crew levels. And so right now this is going to take one day and 10 hours to complete the work on that engine. We should be okay with one engine for a little bit. Waybills and interchange. Waybills tell you where a freight car needs to be delivered to. Most waybills are set by your customers and you'll be paid when the car is delivered. Such waybills cannot be changed. Waybills are also used on cars that your railroad owns to order coal or diesel fuel, as well as for captive service, which we'll cover later. An interchange is a designated track, usually a yard, that a railroad uses to interchange cars without a railroad. On your railroad, the yard behind your engine shed doubles as your interchange. The interchange is served daily at 6 o'clock a.m. The Class 1 railroad takes delivered cars away and delivers incoming cars for your customers. If the interchange is ever full and there are more cars to be delivered, the Class 1 will return later in the day. Railroad Fuel Service. Much of our freight work will be for our customers, but we'll also need to keep our railroad running, and fuel is a big part of that. Your coaling towers and conveyors provide coal for use by engines, and it'll be up to you to order and deliver that fuel that supplies these. This is called Railroad Fuel Service Freight. You'll use cars owned by your railroad for this. 
Fortunately, we already have a hopper spotted at the conveyor supply track near where you loaded coal into your tender earlier. Let's use this hopper to order more coal. Open the inspector for the hopper car with control click and switch to the operations tab. So let's go ahead and move over there to it. All right, we're here. Let's go ahead and hit control click and switch to the operations. Find the loads to and empties to drop downs. These configure where the car's weigh build to when it's loaded and emptied respectively. Make the following settings. Loads to East Whittier coal loader. Empties to East Whittier interchange. This will immediately set a weigh bill to the interchange because the car is empty. When the hopper is delivered and the interchange is served, it will be loaded with coal and payment withdrawn. You can view costs on the East Whittier interchange panel of the company location step. The return weigh bill to East Whittier coal loader will be automatically set. Hit tab to toggle the overlay display. An orange tag will appear above the hopper. The color indicates the east-west position of the location. Hovering your mouse over the label will show another overlay indicating where that location is. If the tracks are in view, you will also see the destination tracks highlighted. The car must be on the highlighted portion in order to be considered delivered. You can also see the waybill information by hovering over the car itself or in the inspector's operations tab. Let's move the hopper to the interchange. Start by coupling to the hopper car and the fuel track behind the coaling tower. Well guys, as much as I would love to go ahead and move that hopper where it needs to go, we will do that in the next episode. We have spent a good amount of time recording this one and uh, we've got a lot done so far. We've learned the basic controls of the engine. We've been able to rescue a derailed locomotive and put it back into the engine shop. We have hired somebody to come in and fix that engine. And we've got some more work to do for the next episode we come in. So that's all we've got for today. Check out Railroader on Steam if you're interested. And hey, if you're new to this channel, be sure you subscribe to Danny B Trains for more of Railroader and also more content from Trains 22. We're currently working on a great CSX Tennessee based map that you're probably going to enjoy. So until next time, thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.